All right, so our theme verse, John 13, 34. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, you must love one another. Um, this seems kind of easy at first glance, at least it was to me. I was like, oh, okay, that's, yeah, I got that. I love my mom, my dad, my brother. I love my friends. You know, I'm nice to people at school. I held a door open for someone I didn't even know. People tell me I'm a pretty nice person, so yeah, all right, I got this. Love one another, boom, check, done. But then Jesus hits us with, no, 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 you must love your neighbor. And your neighbor is everyone. Everyone. So we must love everyone, okay. And then it goes even further in Matthew 5, and he tells us we gotta love our enemies. And you're like, what? Okay, so suddenly this just got a whole lot harder. And so for the longest time I was um, puzzled by this. I was like, okay, well, why would God tell us to love everyone? You know, I thought he just set us up for failure because I was like, this is impossible. You know, because I started thinking about all these people and, and just like, you know, there's a lot of people I just don't get along with. A lot of people I just don't like. So, you know, I thought, yeah, this is impossible. God, why would you tell us to love everyone if, if we can't? There's too many people I don't like. And then I realized sometime later that that word like was what was causing a lot of my confusion. See, I had it mixed up. There's quite a difference between liking a person and loving a person. Now, if you like someone, I'm um, just talking in a general sense, if you like a person, you enjoy being around them. You got things in common, um, you share interests, and you just like to do things together. You enjoy each other's presences, like we like our friends. Um, but loving people, and kind of like they talk about in the skit, it's more than just feeling. It's more than enjoying a person's presence. It's, it's action. It's choosing um, to treat people with kindness. It's choosing to put other people's needs first. It's choosing to be forgiving. And then once I realized this, I was like, oh, okay, that changes things a bit. Knowing that it's a choice, not necessarily a feeling, because we can't always control our feelings, right? But it's a choice. And suddenly I realized, well, maybe it's not so impossible after all. So, knowing this, I started thinking about people in my life that maybe could be role models for showing the love of Christ. Obviously, Jesus Christ is our ultimate role model for showing love, right? Because he has loved himself, and he was perfect and loving. But, um, so I started thinking, I'm like, well, who's someone here on earth that I feel like really shows the love of Christ pretty well that I could... Um, maybe model my actions after. So obviously working here at camp, there's a numerous amount of people that could be role models for this, right? Um, but one that I thought of was our maintenance guy here. His name is Tim. Tim has a knack, if you spend enough time with him, you'll notice Tim has a knack for going out of his way to make people feel noticed, to make people feel special, to make people smile and laugh. And he also goes out of his way a lot to put other people's needs first. A lot of this comes with the territory of his job, but there are other things that he does, like not necessarily maintenance related, that he does to help us out. Like just this last week, he came over and took a dead mouse out of my sink because I did not want to get anywhere near that. Did he have to do that? No, but he laughed and he's like, yeah, sure, I got this. So it's just little things like that. He does this all the time. And so I was thinking of another story, um, another time that Tim showed me a lot of, a lot of Christian loving. Um, so, how many of you here are lovers of the environment? Yes. Got a green thumb. You love this wonderful, beautiful planet that God made. You care about it and you want to save it. Raise your hands. Yes. I, I'm a huge... I love the environment and I try to do what I can to make sure it's a healthy place. Um, and I enjoy saving energy when I can. Which leads to my next question. How many people have ever made a silly mistake? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure everyone should have a hand up because everyone makes silly mistakes and I made a particularly silly one last year. So, it's getting cold out and it's about winter time, going home for Christmas break. And I'm like, alright, well, you know, Jocelyn had already left for her family's house a day or two before me and I was closing up the house and I was like, you know, I can just turn the heat off because it's going to be just wasting energy if I leave it on and no one's here. Okay. Didn't even think twice about it. Clicked it, turned it off, left for about a week. I come back and I'm the first one back at the house and I walk in and I'm like, yeah, it's a little chilly in here. That's, that's okay. Um, but the, the next thing I noticed was I, I looked to my Keurig and it was 
frozen solid. Any of the water that was in the tank was frozen solid, and it was at that moment that I realized I messed up. Um, See so if you've never owned a house before, uh, like me, or never lived in your own place, you'd know this, that uh, when you turn the heat off, water freezes. When it, when it gets really cold, water freezes. Um, there are pipes in your walls that have water in them. <laughs> and when, the, when water freezes, it expands. So when you got water in these pipes in your walls and your house freezes and that water freezes, it expands. And sometimes it makes your pipes burst. Which is fine. You don't notice it until the water starts to um, thaw. The ice starts to thaw and become water. So, yeah, I realized at this point that, oh, man, um, I think I froze my house. I went and I, like, looked in the toilet. Sure enough, the, the water in the bowl is frozen. I tried to, like, turn the sink faucet. No, those things wouldn't move because they were frozen, and I couldn't even turn a sink on. So I was like, it's, like, 8.30 and at night, and I'm there alone. I'm like, I need somebody to help me with this. So who do I call? Tim the Maintenance Man! <laughs> yeah, Tim the Maintenance Man. I was like... I didn't want to call him because I was like, this is his break, too. He's on, he's on break. He's home for the night. He's probably relaxing in front of his fireplace. I don't want to bug him. But, I mean, it was my only choice. And I called him, and I expected him to be kind of kind of cranky, maybe a little frustrated. But he actually laughed, and he was like, yeah, yeah, I'll be right over there to help you out. So we were kind of, you know, working. We were working. We heated up some water that I had in the jug, and we started pouring it down the sink drains. And things were thawing out nicely. No problems. The sinks were working again. And I was like, okay, it's fine, it's just cold. So Tim said, well, you can just go stay somewhere else for a while. So Jocelyn was home at this point. We went to hang out somewhere a little warmer. Tim said he'd check up on our house every couple hours and see how things go. It was great. Until I got a call. And Tim said, you, you may want to come home and you might want to bring your roommate and a few towels. I was like, okay, this is, this is not going to end well. I get home. And there is two inches of water on my kitchen floor, on my bathroom floor, and in our laundry room in the back. Guys, there was water coming out of my walls, and it's not supposed to come from there, I don't think. So, um, we had a problem. Uh, so we had shop vacs in there. I got my, like, jeans pulled up. I'm wading into this two, three inches of water, and I'm trying to shop vac it as fast as I can so that it doesn't go even further into the house. We're filling up the shop vac, carrying it outside, dumping it, coming back in, turning it I'm getting frustrated at this point. And yet, Tim had his game face on. He found out how to turn the water off. Boom, no problem. Still laughing it off. I'm like, how are you so, how are you so good right now? <laughs> I'm a little upset, and this was my own problem. Um, but we, we did end up um, fixing things. Um, there was a couple burst pipes in my walls. But on the bright side of things, I did learn a lot about plumbing through this experience. So, um, yeah, Tim ended up donating many of his hours that he could have used in other places around camp. But he used it to help me fix my house, which took a while. Um, but, you know, I started to think, and I'm like, gosh, how easy would it have been for him to be frustrated with this? He did not need to spend that much time helping me out because I did something kind of stupid, <laughs> you know? And, well, for most people, that would be common sense, but it wasn't for me at the time to leave the heat on. But he was good-mannered through the whole thing. He could have met the situation cranky and irritated and frustrated, but he brought a smile and his light heart, and he laughed it off, and we still joke about it to this day. And I think that really made all the difference for me um, and how I felt about an embarrassing situation. Um, but it, you know, it just made it so much better. And I think in a way that this is the kind of love Jesus wants us to show. Now this was a silly story and a silly situation, yes. But I think sometimes the hardest times to show love are when people do things that frustrate us. Even just everyday little things that just grind our gears and drive us crazy. Sometimes for me personally, I find those times to be the hardest times to remember to show the love of Christ. Um, but I think Tim modeled it very well in this situation. He chose to be forgiving. He chose to be kind, he chose to be lighthearted, and he put my needs in front of his needs that night and in front of Camp's other needs. I think he really did a great job of modeling this love that Christ wants us to show on a daily basis. Um, so yeah, it's hard to be loving all the time. I get frustrated easily, and a lot of times I choose irritation over love. And I know that's not how, how Jesus wants us to be. It is very hard to love some people that we don't like. But it's 
possible. And it's possible through prayer and through the love of God. Um, we need to be praying for God's love. In Exodus 34, he said, it says that God describes himself as abounding in love or overflowing. He's overflowing with love. He's got so much, it's just, he, it can't be contained. And God can fill us up with this overflowing love if we ask him to. Um, so we saw the Grinch before I came up here, right? And we show, obviously, Cindy Lou had plenty of reasons to be frustrated with the Grinch. He did not show her love whatsoever, right? Probably didn't even like him that much. But she chose to show him love. And you see how much of a difference that makes to him, right? His heart starts to, to grow and it just it makes a huge difference. And I think that's what our love could do. If we show Jesus to others like we're supposed to, like how God wants us to, we can make all the difference in the world. So yes, it's hard, but you don't have to do it alone. You pray for God to fill you up with his love to show to others. So I'm going to leave you guys with a challenge. I want you to think for just a second. Think about just one person that sticks out in your life that you're kind of having a hard time showing love to. I'll give you a second to think of that person. Once you have someone in mind, the first thing I want to challenge you to is to pray for them today. Because I think that's the first step in loving a person is praying for them. Even when maybe you don't really want to. Um, pray for them and then pray for yourself. Pray that God can fill you with love for that person. Or show you an opportunity where you can step in and, and be loving to that person when you yourself don't really want to. Um, just pray that God helps you to make that choice to be loving and forgiving and to serve someone else over yourself. So give that a try. Um, it's hard, but with God you can do it, right? All right, let's pray.